In this video, we're going to discuss how to integrate the functions which contains the radicals. For example, the square roots. For example, we're going to discuss how to integrate this kind of functions. And it's, it's, I need to say that it's always difficult to deal with the square roots when we integrate, but especially for all these kind of functions. Just imagine that if our function would be slightly different, then it would be much more easier for integrate this. For example, if our integration would be a squared minus x, for example, not x squared, just simply x, then it would be much more easier for us to integrate. We could just make one substitution, u to be equal to the a squared minus x, then du is equal to the derivative of the right-hand side part with respect to the x, which is going to be equal to the minus 1 multiplied to the dx, right? Then we can substitute everything here with the new variable u, which is going to be a square root of u, multiply to the minus du, which is very straightforward to integrate. It's going to be minus u in the power of 1 over 2 plus 1, divided to the 1 over 2 plus 1, plus the constant. Unfortunately, this doesn't work for this case when we have the x squared, because um, if you just try to make the substitution to be equal to the u to be equal to the a squared minus x squared, then du is going to be equal to minus 2x multiplied to the dx, right? Because a is a constant, its derivative with respect to the x is equal to the zero. Now, if you try to make the substitution of everything with the u, you, you are really struck, stuck because you don't have here actually x. So if, if you have the x, then it would be easy, but unfortunately we don't have the x. So I'm just showing you this to give you a slight motivation to learn how to deal with this kind of integrations. So in this lecture, we're going to discuss how to deal with this kind of integration when we have the plus instead of minus, and also with this kind of integration when the terms are flipped around this minus. It appears, so this T forms, the first one and the last one, looks very much similar, but we need completely different techniques in order to solve them. So let's start from the first one. In order to do the, the so we are just given the integration of the four minus x squared, which looks like nice, yeah, so we need to figure out the substitution for the x in order to, so which allows us to get rid of the square root. And, and for example, we might use the trigonometric substitution. So we might try to make the substitution x to be equal to the 2 multiplied to the sine of u. Don't ask me where I got this function. So it, it works. So for example, if I just write down the 4 minus x squared, it's going to be equal to the square root of 4 minus, instead of x squared, I'm going to put the 4 minus u in the square. It's going to be a 4 sine square of u, right? So we can take out the 4 out of the square root. It's going to be simply 2, right? And inside the square root, we're going to have 1 minus sine square of u. So since 1 can be any 1, can be write, written as the sum of the cosine square plus sine square. If you subtract one of the signs, you are going to have simply cosine square from the square root. It's going to be simply cosine of u. So you can write this as the 2 multiplied to the cosine of u because 1 minus sine square of u is cosine square of u. So we, we can substitute 4 minus x squared with the t multiplied to the cosine of u. And how to substitute, how to deal with the dx. So in order to find what's dx, I just need to take the derivative from this formula. So derivative with respect to the x from the left-hand side and derivative from the, with respect to the u from the right-hand side. If you take the derivative with respect to the u from the right-hand side, it's going to be 2 multiplied to the cosine of u. So we are basically making the new substitution. It's going to be the integration of 4 multiplied to the cosine square of u du, which allowed us to get rid of the square root. And we've discussed already in the trigonometric integration how to deal with this kind of integration. So in general, if you have the integration in the form of a squared minus x squared from the square root, you need to try to use the trigonometric substitution. You need to substitute x to be equal to the a minus sine of u. Then you need to try to get rid of everything. So, so you need to try to substitute everything which is connected with the x with the new variable u. So basically, 
we are going to um, make so we are going to write down the x to be equal to the a multiplied to the sine of u. The dx is going to be equal to the a multiplied to the cosine of u du. And also, please note that a squared minus x squared in this case is going to be simply a multiplied to the cosine of u. Okay, so the same thing as we did, but we did this for the uh, when the a squared was equal to the two and the square. So how to deal with this case when we have plus instead of minus? So previously we had an example of four minus x squared. Now we have the example of nine plus x squared. So we need to again, try to figure out the trigonometric substitution of the x, which allows us to get rid of the square root. For example, this might be tangent, right? So the x can be written as the three multiplied to the tangent of u, okay? So then dx is going to be equal to the three multiplied to the derivative of the tangent is secant in the square of u du. Okay, so the only thing is we just need to um, look whether we are able to get rid of the square root. So in this case, it's going to be nine plus x square is going to be nine multiplied to the tangent square of u, right, from the square root. So the nine can be taken from the square root as the three. It's going to be three multiplied to the one plus tangent square of u. Okay, so please note that tangent square of u can be written in terms of the second square. So the three multiplied to one plus, so let us write down the tangent square as the sine square of u divided to the cosine square of u, right? If you give the common denominator, it's going to be cosine squared plus sine squared in the numerator, which is equal to the one. If you take the square root, it's going to be equal simply to the three multiplied to the one divided to the cosine of u. Voila, so we don't have the square root anymore. So our integration can be written as, as the integration of, so actually one over cosine of u is secant, right? So the, this term nine plus x squared is three multiplied to the secant of u. So three multiplied to the secant of u. And this term dx is, is going to be written as a three multiplied to the secant in the square of u. So multiplied to the three secant in the square of u du. So which is going to be nine multiplied to the secant of cube of u, which is super complicated integration, but at least we don't have the square root. So in general, if you have the integration in this form, a squared plus x squared from the square root, then you need to apply the substitution x to be equal to the a multiplied to the tangent of u, right? Then dx, and then we need to use a couple of formulas which connect the tangent in the second. For example, one plus the tangent in the square is equal to the secant in the square. Then we need to try to substitute everything here. Inside the square root, we're going to have a squared plus a squared tangent square of u multiplied to the dx is going to be, dx is going to be written as a multiplied to the second square of u du. Then we can take out the everything from the square root and we're going to have this integration. Okay, so which is super complicated integration as I told you. So please refer to our another video where we solve this problem. Uh, and we assume that it is going to be easier than integrating the original integration. So let's try to integrate this here as well. So, so let me try to integrate the second cube of x dx. So we need to use the trigonometric, uh, like the one of the trigonometric uh, techniques, which is called the integration by parts. So instead of writing second cube, I would like to write this as the second multiplied to the second square of x dx. Then I need to substitute something as a u, something as the dv, right? So we need to figure out, hey, what we can integrate and what we can differentiate. So we can integrate this term definitely because we know that the derivative of the tangent is second square. So that is why integration of the second square is going to be tangent. And we can definitely take the derivative of the second. Actually, we can take the derivative of almost any function. So the u is going to be equal to the secant of x. dv is going to be equal to the secant square of x dx. Then du is going to be equal to the secant of x multiplied to the tangent of x. 
and v is going to be equal to the tangent of x. And according to the formula of the integration by parts, so I need to multiply first of all u to the v, then integration of the v u. So let's integrate this. So it's going to be the integration of secant, uh, sorry, it's equal to the secant of x multiplied to the tangent of x minus the integration of tangent of x multiplied to the second multiplied to the tangent multiplied to the dx, right? It's going to be tangent in the square multiplied to the secant of x dx. So if you remember, we could write down one plus tangent in the square as the second square, right? So the one plus tangent square of x is equal to the secant in the square of x. So that is why tangent in the square of x can be written as one minus, worse, right? So tangent in the square can be written as the second square of x minus one. So I'm going to substitute this there was this one. So it's going to be equal to, so this term is equal to the secant of x multiplied to the tangent of x minus the integration of the secant square of x minus one multiplied to, so this is instead of tangent, right? So multiply to the secant of x dx. So which we can just open, it's going to be written as secant in the square multiplied to the tangent of x minus, so if you open the brackets, it's going to be the integration of the second cube of x dx plus the integration of the secant of x dx. <laughs> Yeah, which doesn't make our life easier because we started with one integration of the second cube, we've got two more integrations, right? So we started, if you remember, with the integration of the second cube of x, and we've got this integration when we have the second cube plus additional integration. But we need to always remember that we started from the second cube of x dx, right? Then if I put this integration to the left hand side, right, becomes with the plus, we will have two multiplied to the integration of the second cube of x. dx is going to be equal to the secant of x multiplied to the tangent of x plus the last integration, which is actually equal to the ln of tangent of x plus secant of x plus the constant. So actually the integration of the two multiplied to the second cube of x uh, is going to be equal to this integration. Then we can just divide both of the sides to the t and find the integration. So at least we are able to integrate the second cube of x and we need to use the substitution with the tangent if you are dealing with this integration a squared plus x squared. And there is a last part of, of this kind of trigonometric integration when we deal with the radicals as x squared minus a squared. So in this case, we need to use the new type of the substitution. So we can't use the sign anymore. We need to use the x to be equal to the four multiplied to the secant multiplied to the tangent of u, right? Then we need to try to like substitute everything with the u. So in this case, square root of x squared minus 16 is going to be equal. So x squared is equal to the 16 multiplied to the second square of u, right? Minus 16 from the square root. So if you take out the 16 from the square root, it's going to be simply four. Square root of second square of u minus one is left inside the square root, right? And we know that the square root of as second square minus one is equal to the tangent square. We've just seen this in the previous example. It's going to be a four multiplied to the tangent of u. So now we are going to substitute this part of this integration with the four tangent of u, and dx is going to be substituted with this one. So multiply to the du. Then yeah, so we can we can we can integrate this. <laughs> We've just integrated this. It's going to be a sixteen multiplied to the secant of u multiplied to the tangent square of u du, which is which is possible to integrate, right? So in general, if you are dealing with this kind of integration, 
um, well, what, what, x squared minus a squared, then you need to use the substitution x to be equal to the a multiplied to the second of u, right? Then we need to use this rule that the second squared minus one is equal to the tangent in the squared. Again, we need to use, we need to try to substitute everything with the u, so that x is equal to the a multiplied to the second of u, dx is equal to the a multiplied to the second of u, multiplied to the tangent of u, multiplied to the du, then after the substitution, we are going to have this t integration, which is going to be a squared multiplied to the second cube of u minus a squared multiplied to the second of u, which is possible to integrate. We know how to integrate the second cube, right? And there is a formula how to integrate the second of u. So just to summarize, uh, if you have the integration in this form, x squared minus x, uh, a squared minus x squared, we need to use the substitution of the sign, right? A, x is equal to the a multiplied to the sign of u. If you are dealing with this kind of integration, then we need to use the x multiplied to the tangent. And if you are dealing with this kind of integration, x squared minus a squared, which is flipped around the minus with respect to the first form, then we need to use the second as the substitution.